All right, buenos dias, mis amigos. All right, so today I'm going to talk about the second coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. I'm going to uh, share some uh, video clip or a video clip of Billy Graham. And I'm going to show how he had it right. Yeah, Billy Graham. Now, before you rage comment, all right, before you do that, just hear me out, okay? Um, I'll also show you that what he got wrong. Now, you have to be fair about this because, um, you know, you figure the guy lived to be 99 years old. So... It stands to reason that he would make mistakes in his life, <laughs> right? I mean, I've made a lot of mistakes myself, right? I mean, I've made more mistakes than anybody that's ever lived. And so it wouldn't be right for me to uh, persecute or condemn Billy Graham because he made a couple mistakes. But... Nevertheless, I want to show you at least one error that he makes. Okay. All right. So, uh, before I get into that, let me just share something that's wrong. Okay, very, very wrong. You, this is, I'm going to go back to 1969. All right, this is from 1969. Now, this is from four hours ago, the year 2023. It's just wild where this the world that we're living in now. The role of the James Webb Space Telescope in revealing the existence of extraterrestrial life and the arrival of the cedars. Know the reason behind the possibility of millions disappearing worldwide as space-time portals begin opening, why a partial planetary evacuation is pending and why solar flare activity may dramatically increase. Discover how a false flag alien event may be used as a contrived second coming. Alright, so the video is suggesting that when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven and people disappear, it's going to be UFO aliens. And this is presented as being serious. Okay? Now, that's the world that we're in now. And, you know, this false flag alien event, uh, you know, they could, I can see that they could fake an alien encounter. They cannot fake uh, UFO aliens coming and taking people millions of people from the earth they, that that'll never happen and that's ridiculous all right so i just want to share that with you it just to sort of give you an idea where we're at now and then i want to go back in time to 1969 the year before i was born now what's interesting this 1969 billy graham was 50 years old 51 he turned 51 in 1969 that's two years younger than than what I am you know when Billy current when Billy Graham was 51 he was preaching all around the world to thousands millions of people I'm just some bozo on YouTube at the age of 51 right but it's interesting all right, let's listen to what he has to say a little bit, and I'll comment along the way. I want you to turn with me for the last sermon to the third chapter of Second Peter. The third chapter of Second Peter. I want to speak tonight on the subject, the signs of the time, the end of the world, the second coming of Jesus Christ. 
All right, so keep in mind, the signs of the time, the end of the world, and the coming of Jesus Christ. And I want you to turn with me to the third chapter, beginning at verse 3 of 2 Peter. Knowing this first, that there shall come in the last days. Now notice that expression, the last days. You'll find it many times in the Bible. All right. That's interesting, huh? Many times in the Bible. That's true. He's got it right. Well, and not every mention is last days, but um, there are many examples just from that phrase alone, last days. All right. And, um, you know, many examples. So that's a good job out of Billy Graham. The Bible says that there's going to be an X point in history that will be known as the latter days or the last days. Many people think that we are in that period now. We are. Nobody knows for sure. Uh, I, the Bible no. warns us against speculating on times and seasons no. and days. No, right, no, 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 Billy, come on, okay, so this is not a big deal, and this is not what I was wanting to show you, but, <laughs> come on, Billy, doggone it, we can't know exactly when Jesus comes, right, but learn the parable of the fig tree, when his branch is yet tender and putteth forth leaves, ye know that summer is nigh. So likewise ye, when ye shall see all these things, know that it is near, even at the doors. Alright, so we can know it's, it is very close. But there is a period of time taught in the Bible that is called the last days. And then the next word is scoffers. Scoffers will come in the last days. Cynics. People who say, oh yeah, God is dead. We can't find God anywhere. We took a trip up in space. We didn't meet God. We didn't meet any angels while we were up there. Oh, good point, buddy. Good point. We went up to space, man. Men walked on the moon. And there was a headline way back then that I saw years ago that said, We've been to heaven and there is no God. Scoffers. The last days. And this was 50 plus years ago. And there are going to be other scoffers that will scoff at the idea of future judgment, scoff at the idea that Jesus Christ is coming back to this earth again. They'll laugh at the whole idea. Why? The next phrase tells us, walking after their own lust. Yeah, I mean, I look at the fire and the passion that Billy Graham has, man. That's great. Where is the fire in the passion for the truth today? Really? They don't want Christ to come. Look at They don't want Christ to come and faces. interfere with their way of living. This guy here is in outer space. They love their lusts. They love their sins so much that they don't want Christ coming and they cannot accept the idea that God is a God of judgment. Now we know that God is a God of love. We know that God is a God of mercy, but the Bible also teaches that God is a God of wrath. He's a God of anger. We, now, that's not an emotional anger like you and I have. That's an eternal anger at evil, a righteous indignation that Jesus had when he went into the temple and drove out the money changers, the righteous indignation that he had when he turned on the Pharisees and call them all kinds of names in the 23rd chapter of Matthew. See, I love that. I love the passion there. And, he, and he's right. And the Bible does say, Be ye angry. Be ye angry. 
Be ye angry and sin not. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath. Now think about this. In Revelation uh, chapter 3, verse 16, oh, I forget now what church was that to? The church of the Laodiceans? 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 I can't say that. Whatever. All right. He says, I know thy works, that thou art neither cold nor hot. I would thou wert cold or hot. So then because thou art war uh, because thou art lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will spoo thee out of my mouth. Now, this is just a, a a warning, if you will, that we need to be one or the other. Right? Really. And so the obvious uh inference or whatever the right word is is that we ought to be on fire for the Lord we should have that spirit that drives us to the truth we should be on you know on fire for God not just crazy but have a strong desire for the truth and have a strong foundation to stand upon and to speak boldly in the name of God. And, um, you know, look, I, one example I can give you is, uh, you know, this, uh, I don't know the letters, the the queers, you know, the, the queer movement or whatever you call it. Now, it's wrong to be a homosexual, right? There's no question about it. It's wrong. It's an abomination to God, right? To have homosexual relations. And we ought to I mean, if you're if you love God, we ought, there's no way you would you should say, "Oh, that's okay." Well, I sin too. It's not okay. Your sin, no matter how small you think it is, it's not okay, and homosexuality certainly is a sin, and that's not okay either. There's no reason at all to say, oh, that's okay. No, it's not okay. So, I'll get fired up about that. But primarily, he accused them of being hypocrites. Yeah, and so, uh, it's important, really, it's important... To stand on a firm foundation, stand up for the truth, recognize, I mean, if you're if you're born of God, you already know that you're a sinner, and you already know that Jesus paid for your sins. And you already know that you are saved by grace through faith, not of yourselves. It is the gift of God. There's no reason at all at this point to say, oh well, that's okay. Go ahead and have gay sex it's okay no it's not it's not okay okay so anyways let's continue scoffers walking after their own lust and my point was that um we ought to you know stand in the truth right stand for the truth no matter what it is no matter what topic it is always stand strong for the truth and then the scripture says for this they willingly are ignorant of, that by the word of God the heavens were of old, and the earth standing out of the water and in the water, whereby the world that then was being overflowed with water perished. But the heavens and the earth, which are now, by, right the, now, by, the, same by word, the same word, are kept in store, are kept in store, reserved unto fire, reserved unto fire, against the day of judgment, against the day of judgment, and perdition, and perdition of ungodly, of ungodly men. men. But beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing. You know, this is interesting. You see what he's, you see what he's quoting from, the King James Bible, 1969. Now. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna show you anything from uh, this here, 1990. This is 21 years later, and 
Um, he, I don't know what Bible he's reading from, but he, but he quotes from other uh, multiple Bible versions. And, you know, in 1990, he was what, 70, what was he, 72 or whatever. I don't know how old he was, whatever he was, 70, 71, whatever. So it's interesting. They got to him. They got to him. But in 1969, he was pretty strong in the King James Bible. Now, of course, 1969 was a much different world than 1990, and certainly a much different world than the year 2023. That one day is with the Lord a thousand years, and a thousand years is one day. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering to us, not willing that any should perish but that all should come to repentance. But remember this, that day of the Lord is going to come like a thief in the night, in which the heavens will pass away with a great noise, and the elements will melt with fervent heat, and the earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up. Now in this passage of scripture, the Apostle Peter, under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, is underlining something that is taught from Genesis to Revelation. There we go, boys. There we go, boys. He's getting it. He's got it, man. He's full of the Spirit. He's got it. When Jesus comes, it's the end of the world. Man, this is great stuff. Because you don't hear preachers talking about this today. It's unbelievable. It's unbelievable the world that we're in today. And if you, if I were to play this video, this I think it's this one. Maybe it's another one that I watched this morning. It doesn't matter. Who cares? Talks about Christians teach this idea that when Jesus comes, he'll bring a thousand years of peace. No, 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 no. I don't know what kind of Christians this guy's talking about. But there is not coming a thousand years of peace. There's not. And you are a liar and a deceiver. And I don't see any possible way that you're a child of God, uh, a born of the Spirit of God, to preach this sort of thing. I, I don't know how it's possible. How can a son of God preach something that is so evil and wicked it, it's beyond me I, I can't I can't fathom the possibility I mean I get it Christians are deceived I got it I got it but what are you teaching man now look at it this way so you say you believe in Jesus you say you're born of the Spirit of God you say that Jesus died for your sins and cleansed you from all unrighteousness that he's done all the work and that we're saved by grace through faith and then you teach this idea that well when Jesus comes we're gonna be turned into little green men with antennas on our heads and we're gonna fly around and have sex with all the women that we want now are you saved you believed everything correctly but what you're putting your hope into is evil are you saved yeah and so I've heard people say well this isn't a salvation as you well, it, it isn't so you think Jesus cleansed you from all unrighteousness just so that one day he can turn you into a little green man with antennas on your head and a great big walker and you can go around and have sex with all the women that you want is that what you're putting your hope into? A thousand years of sex? I mean, and you still, this isn't a salvation issue? Are you sure about that? What are you putting your hope into? I know I'm giving an extreme example. All right, I'm doing that for the reason to show you that, well, hey, if that's wrong, then so also is this idea that we're gonna uh, that there's gonna be a thousand years of peace after Jesus comes that's wrong too 
whether you want to talk about all the sexual activity that takes place during that thousand years or not doesn't matter because there isn't coming a thousand years of peace that's not in the Bible anywhere at all you've taken on a new religion that is absent that is not found in the Bible all right our hope you know those of us that are born of God those of us that are sons of God our hope is in eternal life everlasting life not a thousand years you take that thousand years and shove it up your yin yang I don't want it I want everlasting life life that never ends All right, that's a huge difference you think about a thousand years that's a long time no I don't want it I want everlasting life or I want nothing All right. and people are deranged in my opinion to even teach this idea that there's coming a thousand years of peace it's totally inconsistent with everything that we've read in the Bible from Genesis to Revelation and it's as if these people have no idea what the Bible says and they're just getting their doctrine from other men not trusting the Bible at all it's crazy the world that we're living in all right so let's continue that a day of judgment is going to come it's coming but the world is going to have to stand someday before the judgment of God that's right we will stand there as an individual we'll stand there as a nation we'll stand there as a society well, to give an account of our stewardship here okay I get picky. The Bible teaches. I, I'll get a little bit picky. All right. I'll get a little bit nitpicky here. And so when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven, we're all standing before God. Okay. Now, um, like for example, God looks at me and you. And because we're cleaned uh, by the blood of Jesus, right? God will not impute sin on us because Jesus is righteous. He's going to see us as righteous. And because he sees us as righteous, the angels of God are going to gather us up together. We're going to be in his barn, if you will. We're the sheep that's going to be separated from the goats. The angels are going to gather us up. You know, first the dead in Christ, then those of us which are alive and remain shall be caught up together to meet them in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord, right? We will be changed in a moment of time, in a twinkling, be transformed from our incorruptible, I'm sorry, excuse me, and transformed from our corruptible bodies into our incorruptible. We lift it up in the air. And our, of course, our enemy, the unsaved people, are going to be gathered at our feet. Fire is going to come down from heaven and devour them. Jesus is going to stomp his foot on the head of the serpent, destroying all evil forever. Alright, so that's important to understand in my opinion. It's the wrath of God is not going to be poured upon the earth when there are saved people on the earth. We're going to be up in the air with the, the Lord. That's important to understand. That toward the end of the age, as we move toward the end, it will be a time of peril, war, destruction, lawlessness, immorality, Immortal. so great that God will have to intervene and stop the whole thing or we would have racial genocide. No, no, come on. Buddy. Now listen. No, racial what? Come on, buddy. Oh, you know, it's interesting. I, I don't want to beat him up too much about this. But when you go to, for example, Matthew 24, um, you know, in Matthew, Matthew 24, Mark 13, Luke 21, they all say the same. All right, so it, it says here, except those days be shortened, there should no flesh be saved, right? But for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. All right, this is not about war. Yeah, there's not going to be, it's not about an atomic bomb. I get it, in 1969, that was the big fear, all right? I remember being a little kid um, in, uh, in school and they would have, you know, 
there was TV shows about Russia bombing the United States and all that sort of stuff. And, and so one of the drills that we did, I think it was the first day of third grade, if I remember right, was unusual. It was weird, but they had us hiding underneath a desk in preparation if that were to happen. If the Russians were to bomb us, then we'd get underneath of our desk and we'd be safe. Uh, that's what we did now that's not reality okay and neither is it reality to suggest that this whole world is going to be wiped out in an atomic bomb and so God's going to come before that happens that's not what this is talking about at all this is talking about people not being saved all right it's the faith that is lacking and because there are so many people that don't have faith right now that if God let things play out the way they are happening right now then there would come a time when nobody on earth would be saved all right just as we read in Luke 18 you know we cry out day and night for God to have vengeance on them that are against us and it says I tell you that he will avenge them speedily nevertheless when the Son of Man comes shall he find faith on the earth question mark you think about in the days of Noah must have been on my estimation 25 billion people out of 25 billion people there were only eight saved now you think of the days of Sodom and Gomorrah, there wasn't even ten righteous. And so God destroyed those cities. And so also when Jesus comes, will he find faith on the earth? That's a that's a, that's a well of a question right there. That's a well of a question. And except those days be shortened, there should no flesh be saved. But for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. Because there will be at least one or two. I guess there's, that's plural, right? So there's going to be at least two people saved. Right? It, and, you know, you just think, well, you know, there got to be a lot of people saved, right? All around the world. Well, I don't know. I mean, I just don't know. When you've got so many deceivers that you you can point to day after day you know I just don't know are there as many people saved as we are imagining you know I don't know does anybody believe the Bible anymore I mean how many times have you heard somebody point to the Greek and the Hebrew well that automatically assumes that they don't believe the Bible they hold in their hands so how can you say that they're saved if they don't have faith in the Bible that they hold in their hands. They don't have faith in the Word of God. Right? And then so also, these people that are preaching a thousand years of peace after Jesus comes, how can you say that they have faith? What are they putting their faith in? A thousand year orgy? I, I don't know. You can rightly say that they're saved. So it begs the question, is there anybody saved? Uh, who knows? I mean, we can't tell for sure who's saved or not saved, but when these people preach false things, it's hard to say that they're saved, isn't it? So, I mean, Jesus could come back today. What? There's nothing preventing him. I mean, there are liars that are saying are going to say that well, the Antichrist has to come back. Well, no, that's not true at all. The Antichrist is already here. I showed that yesterday. That, I mean, I showed that a million times before. But what are you going to... I mean, let's say Jesus comes back. Now, are you going to say, No, you can't come back yet. The Antichrist hasn't shown up. Well, he's been here the whole time. You just missed it. In other words, you're dumber than dog do. Sit down. All right, let's continue with Billy Graham. Listen to what Jesus said. Listen to what the Scripture says. For there shall be... Jesus said this in the 24th of Matthew. For there shall be great tribulation. 
such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time, nor will ever be again. And except those days should be shortened, there should be no flesh saved. But for the sake of the elect, those days will be shortened. Love it. God says, I'm not going to let the human race blow up in an atomic war. Yeah, world. come on, I'm Billy. going to stop it, and I'm going to save for the elect sake. That's okay. That's why it's so important for believers, even though we're a small minority, for our sake, the human race will be saved. N uh... I don't know what he just said there. The human race will be saved? No. Jesus destroyed this body. You know Jesus is God. And God is manifest in the flesh. He came into our body. Our body is a temple. He destroyed this temple. And he rebuilt this temple. And a brand new temple. An everlasting temple. And he has ascended to heaven with a promise to return. And so when he returns, we will be lifted up. We will be drawn up to him. And we will be transformed into this new temple that he has rebuilt. The old temple is going to be destroyed forever. All right, so uh, I think Billy's making a little bit of a mistake. I, I think that he's a little bit caught up in the times. In, in the times of 1969 was this great fear that Russia is going to blow up the United States. Okay, And that never happened. That's never going to happen. And that's, it's just, you know, I, <laughs> I wish he, I think he forgot about this part up here. Where it says, you shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled. And so it it's pretty apparent that there were a lot of people that were troubled back then and are still troubled today obviously about the wars and rumors of wars okay don't let those things trouble you okay let's keep listening okay. for the sake of that small believing remnant and minority that believe the human race will be saved uh, no. that's what the scripture says now you don't have to believe that I, he's... I'm just quoting Jesus Okay, it's important to understand the difference between the old temple and the new temple and the old body and the new body that we're putting our hope into. I just want, I got to make that clear because Billy doesn't. That's what Jesus said. And those are passages you don't hear much preaching about. And you know the preachers today of judgment and Armageddon are the scientists. Hear that? Ask. He says the preachers of this day are the scientists. And that that's a great way to look at things. Um, I forget the guy's name. Uh, you know, the, the top scientist, the goofy guy. Uh, Tyson. Tyson, uh, you know, Grassley. I forget his name. Doesn't matter. Nielsen. Neil Tyson. Or I, doesn't matter. Whatever his name was is you think of all these guys that are you know that pretend to be astrologers tend to be experts and and on all these different fields all these different uh, you know subjects and all this sort of stuff um, they're not preaching Jesus Christ they're not preaching the Bible but they're preaching as though they are preachers they are preaching as though they are prophets of God when people turn on to their television what they're looking for is a prophet a preacher to tell them the truth and what they're selling you on TV is this idea that government can save you I saw watching a ball game last night and there came a commercial Elton John talking about saving people. Elton John. Love Elton John. Great musician. He used to love his songs when I was a kid growing up. They come on the radio. And, uh, and now he's doing commercials talking about saving lives. That's interesting, isn't it? Because that's what people are looking for is somebody to save their life and there is somebody to save 
your life. Of course, it's the Lord Jesus Christ. It's not Elton John. He can pump you full of drugs, but he can't save your life. All right, so let's continue. Our scientists are doing the preaching. We in the pulpit are silent on the subject, and the Bible is filled with it. We ought to be teaching the people and preaching to the people, warning the people, showing the people the way of salvation. There we go. There we go. I love it. I love it. He's absolutely right. And what's interesting, this was 54 years ago. we got to do the math. 54 years ago, Billy Graham was able to recognize the you know the desolation or whatever inside the churches where people are not preaching the judgment of God and the salvation of our Lord Jesus Christ I mean what why why do you teach the salvation of Jesus Christ if there is no judgment you've got to go hard on the judgment right and to be absent or to be you know there is no judgment I mean when you're saying oh it's okay to have your gay, your little gay sex? No, it's not okay. There's a judgment of God coming, and that's has this gay sex is that's not going to be. It's not you know, <laughs> you're not you're not going to have a thousand years of gay sex. I guarantee it, right? So all sin is going to be done away with. You got to know that, and so. Instead of, um, for example, like what Billy says, people aren't listening to the Word of God. They're listening to people on the TV. You know, you've heard me say Peter Jennings and Dan Rather, right? They're looking at those guys as preachers instead of believing what the Bible says. Now, in the midst of that generation of that day, there lived a man who believed in God. He walked with God. God said, the thing has become so bad and so decadent and so violent, I'm going to destroy the human race and I'm going to start over again. Because you see, when God created man, he gave him a gift he didn't give to his other creatures. He created man in his image and gave him freedom of choice. Man took this freedom and it became license. He went his own way, rebelled against God, began to live his own life, and God said, if you rebel against me, you're going to die. Man has been suffering and dying ever since. It's now appointed unto man once to die, and after that, the judgment. Because of our rebellion. Sin is rebellion against God. We're all rebels. There we the go. Bible says all have sinned and come short of the glory That's of God. That's right. We're all under the sentence of death. We are all under God's sentence. The wages of sin is death. But in the midst of the generation of that day, there lived a man, one man, that believed in God. There he is. His name was Noah. That's right. We've got some people today that believe in God. There are people all over this world, in every country and every city of the world, from Moscow to Peking, that believe in God. They may have to do it secretly, but they believe. When Miss Stalin came to this country, the daughter of Joseph Stalin, she had been reared in intellectual atheism. She said, I could no longer live in a world in which there was no God. And she said, all through the Soviet Union, there are believers. She said, even in the Communist Party, there are believers. You see, there are people who may declare their atheism, but down inside have a secret faith and a secret belief that God is. Noah believed in God in the midst of that crooked and perverse generation, and he dared to stand alone. He dared to stand up and say, I believe, in a period when the whole trend was against any faith at all. And I want to tell you to stand up at one of our modern universities today and say, I believe in God, and lift up a Bible and say, I believe this book to be the inspired word of God takes a lot of courage. That was 54 lot, years ago. There's a professor that leads a lonely life on campus. Can that Christian be done today? Professor. There's a many a student in a class that it leads a lonely life because he believes in Christ and he believes in God and he believes in the Bible. But they're there. God has his people. 
scattered all over the world. And a crusade like this brings a lot of them together. And a lot of you are going to go back and you're going to have to fight a thousand battles with yourself and with others. He dared to stand alone. And that's what Jesus meant when he said, take up the cross and follow me, bear my reproach. Be willing to go outside the camp with me and live where it's unpopular. Are you willing to do that? He said, count the cost. You may have to stand alone. Noah stood alone and God came to him one day and God said, Noah, I'm going to destroy the human race with a flood. I'm going to cause it to rain 40 days and 40 nights and I want you to build a ship and save your household and save the animals. And the Bible says that Noah believed God. Noah didn't argue with God and say, well, Lord, I, there's no scientific evidence that any flood's coming. <laughs> I haven't heard Walter Cronkite mention it on the news yet. There we go. See, Billy Graham, he gets it, man. He got it. Maybe not fully, whatever. Maybe I don't get fully. Maybe you don't get it fully, but he gets it. Right? Noah didn't hear Walter Cron Cronkite. He didn't say it on the news. That's what people are doing. That's what they're looking for. Well, it can't be the end of the world yet. The Antichrist hasn't come on TV. Walter Cronkite hasn't mentioned anything about the Antichrist yet. So Jesus can't come back yet. Dan Rather, Peter John. I don't even know if those guys are on TV anymore either. Um, but, you know, the point is that that's a great point, man. It's a great point. People are looking for their TV. They're looking at their TV as though it's the gospel of God. It's so much easier to sit on your couch or your lazy boy and just tune in, zone in to the television. It's interesting. You know, you sit down and watch for two hours. You'll you'll sit there and watch a movie about space aliens but you can't spend five minutes reading the Bible five minutes to read one chapter in the Bible roughly you can spend all that time watching your favorite next Netflix movies and TV series but you can't spend five minutes reading one chapter of the Bible this is the world that we're living in right and peop this is not new this has been going I mean, if it was happening 54 years ago you know it's happening today well maybe they're not looking at their TV maybe they're looking at the phone or whatever but still it's the same idea it, it's happening today on a greater bigger scale than ever before and people are deceived and they don't they're not interested in the truth they're only interested in what the news tell them I had somebody tell me not long ago that I have to watch the news every day to keep up on current events I gotta know what's going on well, why I know what's going on a whole bunch of evil stuff going on the world's full of corruption I already knew that none of those guys are gonna save me the politicians they'll tell you that they'll save you but they won't save you they can't save you they could never save you and all they're selling on television is fear that's it day after day and it 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 just reminds me I've told the story a thousand times a hundred times anyway and the early 90s, you know, even in the 80s or 70s, the soap operas were big. I don't even know if they still have them. All right. And so I never watched them. I didn't care. I only cared about sports. If it wasn't sports, I really didn't watch it. But in the early 90s, I had a girlfriend, and she watched these soap operas, you know. You know how girls are. They just love these soap operas. Well, I didn't, I didn't understand. I didn't get them. Well, she got me to sit down with her one day. And I watched, and uh, during this episode, uh, 
this um, this girl she got kidnapped and the guy he he took her to to his house and he threw her in his closet and I was like oh man they gotta get her out of there right she's gotta find a way to escape you know your friends gotta figure it out or, or, or something you know something's gotta happen you know and then the show ended and I'm like oh, what the show's over she's still in the closet and what is going on so I had to tune in the next day you know, surely they're going to get her, right? She's going to escape or something. Well, I watched the next day. She's in the closet the whole time. She never gets out. And the show's over again. Like, what's going on? That You know, you can You can only be in the closet for so long. I mean, something's got to happen. So I turned in. I tuned in the next day. Nothing happened. Eight months later, she's still in the closet, and I'm still on the couch watching, waiting. And that same thing, that's happening today, but it's on the network news stations, right? Instead of the soap operas have just changed from these TV series into the local news or the national news. Now, today, the national news is the soap opera. You watch it today, and then they they bait you, right? They um, they wave that uh, the worm in front of you, and and then you got to tune in tomorrow to see what happened. They hook you, right? That's exactly what's going on today with the television. So I think that's a great point by Billy Graham. You know, this whole idea that well, Walter Cronkite, he didn't mention it on the news. So it can't be the end of the world. You know, and just like it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be in the days of the coming of the Son of Man. When Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven, people are just going to be out. Unexpected. Unexpected. Just like it was, there's only eight people saved. So also when Jesus comes, there's only going to be very few, very, very few people saved. Right? And the in the days of Noah, it was the wickedness of the man's heart. And that every imagination of his thoughts, every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only, was evil only. Or I don't know says what's the Bible say and God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually that's the world that we're in right now it is because of the evilness of man's heart the wickedness of his heart the wickedness and evilness of his imaginations the imaginations of his heart that's the problem the heart it's always been the problem is the heart and this is why we read verses like in Deuteronomy circumcise therefore the foreskin of your heart and this is example after example all throughout the Bible how we need to cut the flesh off all right and this is why Jesus has rebuilt the temple is because this heart is no good he's gonna he's he has already rebuilt the temple all right and he's ascended to heaven with the promise that he will return and when he returns then are we changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye at the last trump we shall be changed right for the Lord himself shall descend from heaven this is when Jesus comes this is when the Son of Man comes in the clouds of heaven with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God and the dead in Christ shall rise first and then we which are alive shall be caught up together 
with them to meet the Lord in the air and so shall we ever be with the Lord all right so when this happens right, this is when we are changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye we shall all be changed we that are born of God shall be changed from this old temple into this new temple from the old flesh to the new flesh the everlasting le uh, flesh the flesh that never perishes right this is what's gonna happen when Jesus comes this is the judgment day of God when the sheep are separated from the goats when the wheat is separated from the tares when the saved is separated from the unsaved this is the great day of the Lord right the great and terrible day of the Lord this is judgment day it is the end of the world and it's the final time and everybody's gonna know it everybody's gonna know there's not gonna be any mystery any confusion any doubt about it whatsoever when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven that's it uh, you're gonna find out that there is no thousand bonus years there's not a bonus year of a thousand years of gay sex or whatever you're imagining it's not none of that's gonna play out man you're gonna find out with absolute certainty that it's the end of the world and after this you all your sexual fantasies they're done they're done there is no more no more sexual anything uh, your days of pee pees and wee wees are over with where am I at here in first John chapter 2 it says love not the world neither the things that are in the world if any man love the world the love of the father is not in him so if you're preaching a thousand years of sex how, how can you say the love of the father is in you right for all that is in the world the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the father but is of the world and the world passes away and the lust thereof but he that doeth the will of God abideth forever right so when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven it's the end of the world and then he's gonna say behold I make all things new because he's gonna make everything new right and everything is going to be new there's gonna be a new heavens and a new earth there's not gonna be any more pain no more sorrow no more crying neither is there gonna be any more death right behold I show you a mystery we shall not all sleep but we shall all be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye at the last trump for the trumpet shall sound and the dead shall be raised incorruptible and we shall be changed for this corruptible must put on incorruption and this mortal shall have put on immortality then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written death is swallowed up in victory all right so there is no more death that's it death is swallowed up in victory when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven we are changed from corruptible into incorruptible from mortal into immortality and death is swallowed up in victory All right, so we're lifted up in the air and our enemy is gathered at our feet you know when we're lifted up in the air we are changed and then our enemy is gathered at our feet and Jesus stomps his foot on the head of the serpent destroying all evil <laughs> forever and ever destroying all evil that's going to be done away with that's what we're putting our hope into we're not putting our hope into it a thousand years of Peter peace we're putting our hope into everlasting life alright we're putting our hope into a new heaven 
and a new earth wherein dwelleth righteousness right where I mean this is all throughout the Bible man it's all throughout the Bible okay anyways uh, I just want to share the stuff with with you about uh, Billy Graham and what he taught in the 54 years ago and how um, spot on he was on on all these different things and it's absent today in today's world I'm not seeing anybody teaching the fact that when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven it's judgment day that's it and we, you know it's great to teach the salvation of Jesus Christ but without the judgment of God what are you really teaching alright think about it